December 8th is a very important day. It's the feast day of the Immaculate Conception. And Our Lady allegedly appeared in northern Italy in a town called Motichiari to a woman, a peasant woman who's a nurse, and she asked to be called Rosa Mystica. And why is this important? Because she asked for a specific hour of grace. She wants to give us tons of grace for conversion for our bodies and souls between noon and one on December 8th. And stay tuned if it's not December 8th then you've missed that day. There's still another beautiful miracle that I want to tell you about associated with these alleged apparitions. Why should we believe in them? Well, when they first occurred in 1946 and 1947, to Pierina Gili, the bishop did not believe, but the apparitions were not condemned. But over the years, so many miracles, so many beautiful graces were occurring around the world because of Rosa Mystica that people continued to believe. And as well as the apparitions allegedly happening in 1946 and 1947, a few different times, Our Lady allegedly appeared to Pierina again in 1966 and said that the Lord wanted her to create a beautiful fountain of healing waters through a spring in a nearby suburb called Fontanelle. So many, many physical healings happened because of these waters, which also caused a lot of belief from local people and people who traveled there. Nowadays, this place is called the Little Lords of Italy. And just recently in 2019, on December 7th, the local bishop, his name is Pierantonio Tremolada, the Bishop of Brescia, Italy, he celebrated Mass and called the place a shrine. So now it's an official Catholic shrine, and he said the most beautiful words about the place, which changed the view of the church. It is not officially recognized as a bona fide apparition yet. However, the bishop said during his homily on Saturday, December 7th, 2019, with thousands of people around him, as well as heaven joining in by offering the people the miracle of the sun. And before sunset, the sky turned fiery red. And he said during his homily, we are comforted by the full communion between our diocese and the Holy See in the shared desire to pursue with truth the extraordinary experience of Pierina Gili in great humility and with sincere faith. So why should we on December 8th sit in a church if we can, at home if we cannot? Because this is what Our Lady said. She said, it is my wish that every year on December 8th at noon, the hour of grace for the world be celebrated. Many divine and bodily graces will be received through this devotion. Our Lord, my divine son, Jesus, will send his overflowing mercy if good people will pray continuously for their sinful brother. So this is what she's asking us to do. And she said that even hardened sinners will find their way back home. What else should happen during this hour? One full hour of prayer, noon to one, December 8th. During this hour, a person making the hour of grace will put away all distractions and concentrate on union with God. Also, begin this hour by reciting Psalm 51 and repeating it three times with your arms outstretched. So if other people are in the church, this will be an act of a little bit of humility. For the rest of the hour of prayer, you can pray any way you wish. You can sing a song, you can pray the rosary, read scripture, meditate in silence. Now, associated with Rosa Mystica are also little miracles called escarches. In Spanish, this means frost. In English, the best translation for it is glitter, little pieces of glitter. 
Now, these seem to have started appearing in my family's life about a year ago when a friend of ours told us about this miracle associated with the Rosa Mystica devotion. Rosa Mystica meaning mystical rose, which is a name for Mother Mary. And so what started happening is we would see these glitters. Some of them, I don't know if you can see, would be, those are the biggest ones and the smaller ones, tiny ones, and uh, about three different sizes is what we kept finding. Now, normally we would think, okay, that's just glitter that you find, um, and it's normal. Why think anything of it? Well, it would show up all of a sudden out of nowhere. We'd look down, there'd be no glitter. We'd look down again and there would be glitter. And what we realized was this was our mother Mary communicating with us. And my son Christian is here with me because I'm going to explain just one of the many miracles. Can you come and sit with me here, Christian? And um, we had this statue in our living room of Rosa Mystica. And, and whenever Mary does this, it's, it can be quite consoling, even though the different colors allegedly mean different things. And I had seen a big blue escarcha. And the ones we've collected, we've put in here, we've dropped many of them and lost many of them, but the ones we, we have retained, we've put in here. We were also putting the escarches we found right on top of her, yes, right above her little centerpiece on her neck. So Christian, can you say what the different escarcha colors mean? Sure, sure. So the silver, in them I show you the magnanimity of my heart. Ask me what you want. The golden, in them I incline toward the weak one. I am going to heal you spiritually, physically, psychologically, or morally. The blue ones, in them I want to announce to you my proximity. I am with you. I have been present to you. The green means look out for hope. I will act in the favor of God. Hope in God. The red, mean, in times of trial, offer me your sacrifices. Remember that I love you. The transparent ones mean, the road of humility is the path that leads to freedom. I know those who are humble and simple. And the aquamarines, the one that my mom got in our story, is the road that is very treacherous and curved. I want to tell you on that road, I will be with you. So could you tell the story of what happened one day when one of my escarches, an aquamarine one, was put, we always used to put them right um, at the top of her garment right here on her neck, and there was a big aquamarine one there that had disappeared. Yeah, so my mom was having a tough time, and she was looking for her escarcha because she had, she had lost it, and she said, Christian, help me look for my escarcha. Oh, I'm going crazy. I haven't, I don't know where my scarch is, and so I helped her look, uh, and I found a little one. I found a little aquamarine one. And I said, Mom, Mom, I got an escarch And so I brought it over to her. She said, oh, And that's... then we put it on my finger, and... And she was like, oh, it's a lot littler, but so, so, I'm so thankful, Mary. Thank you so much. And then, so she went to put it. You can, you can show them. And we were both watching this at the same time. So there's two eyewitnesses to it. But I put my finger, I, I brought the little escarcha to her neck. And when I pulled my finger away, there was both the little escarcha and the big escarcha that she had had before right there on Mary. And there's no way it could, it wasn't hiding anywhere here. There's no place to hide. This is, um, there's no crevices or anything where this big escarcha could have been hiding. So I lost the big escarcha that had formerly been there, took a little one, put it here. When I removed my finger, we both miraculously saw the big one and the little one right there. So. And then we looked at each other, whoops, sorry, looked at each <laughs> other and started jumping up and down. And it was, it was an awesome time. So those are many miracles, but they're big because the aquamarine is when she's saying, 
The road that is very treacherous and curved, I want to tell you that on that road, I will be with you. So don't forget, Our Lady is always with us, whether it's through escarches or many other ways. She's showing us that she loves us. She's interceding for us. And please don't forget, December 8th, 12 noon, remember this hour of grace. God bless you.